Chapter 1 I don't think it is a dream you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 1 I don't think it is a dream. Prologue Egu, your majesty co te dot hyuk. I apologize for bringing you to this humble place. Te dot hyuk narrowed his eyes and glared at the other person. Son of a bitch. He always called te dot hyuk by that term. It was a form of slang that inmates in a prison were called. Those with a jail sentence of less than three years were called commoners, while those that received more than ten years in prison were nobles. The prisoners with a life sentence were called kings. Of course, the meaning didn't indicate respect at all. It was a very insulting nickname that was filled with scorn and ridicule. I see. Cote. Hyuk sat down in the chair in the middle of the room. He was one of the few inmates who didn't feel helpless in front of the guards. Your Highness has nothing to say. Would you like the coffee that I have left over? Hyuk drank it all at once. Thank you. Kook. Your Majesty. You are still as free as always. Has it already been ten years? Tears are flooding my eyes at the thought of not being able to see you anymore. Dot. Yes yes. That day is here. It will happen in one week. Hyuk's eyes violently trembled. A moan escaped from his tightly closed mouth. The last ten years. He had thought that all his emotions had weathered away. Your claims of innocence have flown away. Your lawyer has run away. In the end. It is like this. The guard held out some documents. What is it? Write down the meal that you would like to have on your last night. If you also have anyone you wish to visit then write it down as well. It was the so dot called last dinner and last visit. Hyuk did nothing for one minute. However, his head was filled with thoughts of his life. He slowly filled out the documents. Ho. Kimchi stew. It is all right for you to choose a fancier meal. This is my little brother's favorite food. Additionally, to not put any pork in. This is quite an unusual order. Surely you don't mean you were poor. Oh, was I right? Dot. Ha ha. Yes, I see. You'll be busy for the time you have remaining. This will be the first death penalty in 30 years so please excuse anyone if they are inexperienced. Hyuk didn't move from his spot for a while. Falsely accused. He was falsely accused and imprisoned. Now, he was doing to die without seeing anything. The guard had a strange thought that he found amusing. Ah. I thought of something. Isn't a criminal who receives a life sentence called the king of crime? Then what should I call a criminal who is going to be executed? Perhaps a god. Ha <laughs> ha. In a week's time, your majesty C.O. Hyuk will become the god of crime. In the room where the guard had left him, Hyuk furiously roared for a while. Asterisk 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 one week passed by quickly. It seemed that his name appeared on TV more than the celebrities. The death penalty system had been just revived after 30 years, so it couldn't be helped that the nation was interested. Human rights organizations protested outside the prison every day but it didn't change anything. Hyuk sat in a chair in the visitation room. His mind calmed down after he had accepted his death. He was waiting for his younger brother and older sister, who he had asked to visit. It had already been over a year since he last saw them. What would they talk about? He wanted to thank his younger brother for believing that he was innocent until the end. Did his sister, who took over as a mother when their parents died when he was a child, live happily every after? Hyuk looked at the clock on the wall. The kimchi stew on the table was already cold. Thump. Hyuk tried to make his expression as casual as possible as he heard the door opening. Dot. Hyuk forgot what he was going to say when he saw the person who came in. Egu, your majesty. I'm not the one you have been waiting for. I'm truly sorry. It was the familiar guard. 
He sat down on a chair in the visitation room. You look very uncomfortable at my appearance. Tae.hyuk didn't deny it. Your family. Was it C.O. Tae.min S.S.I. and C.O. Ha.ran? You won't be able to see the both of them. Is that so? Had they decided to give up everything? He didn't mind that he wouldn't be able to see his family in his last minutes. Thank you for treating me as family, even though I was unable to get rid of the false accusations. He only wanted to say those words. Yes. This was what happened. It would be best if they saw Seo Tae.hyuk as someone who never existed in the first place. Then he would pray that his remaining family would live on happily. He decided to be satisfied with this thought. Then the guard smirked. Seo Ha.ran SSI, your majesty's older sister, Seo Ha.ran, committed suicide last month. Ha. Huh. Is this surprising? No, not really. She had a murderer in her family, of which the media talked about every day. Reporters kept bothering the family. Then. By chance, the mosaic covering her face didn't work properly, and was revealed to her workplace. Oh dear, oh dear. In the end, she was fired. Furthermore, I was told that she had quite a large debt. She eventually lost her remaining assets in a multi-dot-level marketing scheme. Thus, in the end. Kek kek. The guard pretended to strangle himself. T that that is ridiculous. Why would Nunim do that? Anyways, what happened to your younger brother? Co te dot min ssi was it? He was truly smart unlike a certain someone. Didn't he enter S Law University to save his young? He was then caught looking for evidence from politicians and large corporations. Not long after, he disappeared. I guess he thought he was a detective. He should have known not to overrate himself. Dot. My guess is that he is encased in concrete in a barrel drum at the bottom of the Yellow Sea. He should be getting friendly with his new neighbors. Well, what is the exact location of the Dragon King? Kwong. Tae.hyuk struck the table with his fist. The prepared kimchi stew was strewn about, and the room became a mess. Don't lie to me, you bastard. Are you completely crazy? What? My sister committed suicide after losing everything in a pyramid scheme. Don't take me for a fool. And Tae.min went missing after trying to save me. Don't play around. I will kill you. The guard held his side as he laughed. Ha ha ha. Your Majesty Co Tae.hyuk. What, you will kill me? You, who has never even killed a single ant in your life. It was the right answer. At that moment, Tae.hyuk thought it was strange. Until now, he thought that this was the guard that he had known for ten years, however, that was not the case. There was no such guard here. In the first place, there was no way a prison guard could know that much. Why did he ever think that the person before was a prison guard? You. You aren't a guard. Yes. Then what am I? The guard laughed. Tae.hyuk, who saw the man's face, screamed. Aak. In the sockets where one's eyeballs were supposed to be was replaced by a hollow space. The mouth was ripped from ear to ear and something red dribbled down his chin whenever he laughed. The thing smiled and said. I have a very mouth dot watering proposal. Would you like to hear it first? Chapter 1 I don't think it is a dream, Kiyok. Tae.hyuk woke up screaming. It was a bad dream. This happened sometimes. Sometimes there were dreams so real that he couldn't even distinguish between the dream and reality for a while after waking up. Well, that was a shit dream. In his dream, Tae.hyuk was a falsely accused criminal who received the death penalty. Fuck. Just thinking about it caused him to curse. Tae.hyuk sat on his bed and didn't move for a while. Wait a minute. So I was locked up for ten years for a murder I didn't commit. In the end, I was sentenced to death. 
Hyuk certainly didn't kill anyone. However, the evidence was perfect. There was the CCTV taken at the crime scene. The weapon with Hyuk's fingerprints on them. An eyewitness also saw him escaping the crime scene. This, damn. His body started shaking. Wait a minute. It is just a dream. Just think of it as a shit dream. But something was wrong. It was too real to be a dream. It felt like he really had been confined in prison as a death row inmate until yesterday. If it was a dream then who was he now? Taedot Hyuk looked around. It was a three Pyang room with a bunk bed and two desks. There was also a small bookcase with a simple structure. The unique dampness and moldy smell was still the same. It was the room he shared with his brother Taedot Min before he graduated from high school. What? It feels like I'm reminiscing about a memory that is more than ten years old. Crazy. This is all due to that realistic dream. Fifteen years had passed by in his dream. But in reality, only a single night had passed. Then what was this sense of incongruity? Anyway, I am still a high school student, right? Not a death row inmate. Taedot Hyuk calmed his chaotic mind and wanted to check. Yes, a mirror. Taedot Hyuk mindlessly searched the room for a mirror. He would resolve things after confirming his appearance. If he didn't look like a high school student but a man in his thirties. Just thinking about it caused him to have goosebumps. Eventually, he was able to find a small handheld mirror. Ugh. A bad taste. The demon carved on the mirror gave off a bad feeling. Did we ever have a mirror like this? It might belong to his younger brother. The place where he found it was in the bookshelf used by both of them. Phew. Fortunately, I'm still a high school student. The man in the mirror seemed to be in his late teens. Wait a minute. What is this? Taedot Hyuk looked around with a strange expression. However, there was nothing. He looked at the mirror again. There were a lot of strange letters on it. CO Taedot Hyuk, dot title. God of Crime. Rating. Commoner, lacking conditions for upgrade, dot skills possessed. None in addition to this, a status window filled the mirror. Taedot Hyuk laughed to himself. This is a well-made toy. The contents were commonly seen in popular online games. A person who liked things like this. Inside the house, there was only Taedot Min. Either way, he was indeed a high school student. Taedot Hyuk sighed with relief. He wasn't a falsely accused death row prisoner. He was CO Taedot Hyuk, a high school student in the second grade who lived with his older sister and younger brother. Then he started to remember some things. Unlike his brother, who was a good student, he had a slightly delinquent appearance. He sometimes missed school and he couldn't exactly say that his grades were good. Thus, he was treated as a troublemaker. Still, at least he wasn't a high school gangster. Um. Has Taedot Min already left? He could smell the scent of rice cooking from somewhere. It seemed that his sister, Seo Ha Dot Ran, was preparing breakfast. He started to realize that he was hungry. Taedot Hyuk, come eat. His sister's voice was heard. Taedot Hyuk scratched his head and headed towards the kitchen. Asterisk 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 dot. Taedot Hyuk's eyes turned red. Ha Dot Ran asked with surprise. What is it? Did you have a scary dream or something? Taedot Min, who was sitting opposite to Taedot Hyun, stared at him before shifting his gaze back to the English words in the book before him. There wasn't much time remaining for his exam, so even the preparation time while eating was precious. Dust entered my eyes. The menu for breakfast was kimchi stew. There was only a little bit of tofu, and didn't contain a single piece of meat. Ha Dot Ran hesitated before saying. I'm sorry, Nuna will cook you one with meat when I get paid. It really is because dust entered my eyes. 
Also, Nuna's kimchi stew really is the best in the world, so delicious that I would want to eat it before I die. It was a sincere statement. He put a spoonful into his mouth and could taste his sister's kimchi stew. It was a dish that he couldn't eat in his dream, after all. Oh my, this child. You'll be late. Eat quickly. Hadot Ran laughed as she moved her spoon. She didn't dislike Tay Dot Hyuk's praise. Their parents had both died in an accident, so Ha Dot Ran became the sole guardian of Tay Dot Hyuk and Tay Dot Min. Despite being a flower in her early twenties, she was working double shifts at the factory. She didn't wear any makeup but to Tay Dot Hyun, she was more beautiful than anyone else in the world. Tay Dot Hyuk bit his lip. I'll have to get a job straight after graduating high school so I can help Nuna. Then he was startled. A memory from his dream of being a death row prisoner popped up. I graduated from school. I obtained a job with a private security company because I had nothing useful, save my body. And I worked there for two years. Then. He was framed and went to jail. No. It's a dream, a dream. Damn. Tay Dot Hyuk turned on the TV to shake off the memories of the death row prisoner. The prosecution is looking for the whereabouts of Yu Chiol Dot Ho, a prisoner who escaped from Central Prison on the 9th. Dot Ha Dot Ran shook her head and made a fuss as the news of a horrible criminal was heard. Omo. He still isn't caught. It was said that he might be near here. Tay Dot Hyuk, if you go outside, then only go when it is still light. If someone goes up to you then don't follow them. Do you understand? Nuna. I'm grown up. And why don't you say something to Tay Dot Min? Tay Dot Min is steady. Then I'm bad. Oh ho hut. Tay Dot Hyuk and Tay Dot Min were already high school students, but Ha Dot Ran still viewed them as children. Tay Dot Hyuk smiled at his sister's worry and nodded. By the way. That person still hasn't been caught. He was clearly caught. Yu Chiol Dot Ho. A familiar name. He had stayed in the room next to Tay Dot Hyuk's for a while. In order words, a neighbor. Of course, that was just in my dream. Tay Dot Hyuk knew why he had such a dream. It was because he kept hearing these things in the news every day. Hyung. Did you eat something bad? Yu Chiol Dot Ho was caught after committing seven murders three months ago, and broke out of prison just last week. So he hasn't been caught. Tae Dot Min, who was eating rice quietly, interrupted. Tae Dot Hyuk frowned. Tae Dot Min was interested in such things. This time, he was wrong. For sure. What are you talking about? Yu Chiol Dot Ho escaped for six months and was caught after committing three more murders. Tae Dot Min sighed and said. Phew, Hyung. Don't just read Manhua. You should watch the news as well. Yu Chiol Dot Ho was caught. They are completely clueless. There is also a pretty good reward. You must have dreamt about catching him. Wait a minute. Didn't Yu Chiol Dot Ho clearly get caught after his escape? He was a complete psycho and quite talkative. Furthermore, he didn't sleep so he talked about his story until dawn. After two successful breakouts, he gained the nickname, King of Jailbreaks. The place he went and how he escaped were all vivid in Tae Dot Hyuk's head. So Yu Chiol Dot Ho's nickname isn't King of Jailbreaks. Tae Dot Min moved his index finger to the side of his head and moved it round and round. Hey. That isn't something you should do to your hyung. Ah. It's already 8 o'clock. You should hurry if you don't want to be late. The student manager said he would break your legs with a paddle if you are late again. Tae Dot Min got up and ran to his room. Indeed, a terrible dream. Not even the pirate king but the king of jailbreaks. If the dream is correct then Yu Chiol Dot Ho's accomplice should be caught in S City by now. But he isn't. Tae Dot Hyuk unwittingly said the thought that came to his head. You must be half dot asleep. Ha Dot Ran laughed. A few minutes passed. 
t.t.hyuk ha.ran, who was eating while watching the news, starting shivering like she had seen a ghost. Ha! Huh. You were just talking about you Chiol. Ho's accomplice right? Yes. Why? L. Look at that. Ha. Ran pointed to the TV with a trembling hand, breaking news. The accomplice to Yu Chiol. Ho's escape was caught in S City. Tae. Hyuk's mouth gaped open. He was so surprised that he didn't notice the falling spoon. Wait. What is this? What is this? The content of the news was the same as his dream. The evidence was the same as Uchiol.ho's first escape. A dream. It's a dream. Then why is it happening in real life? Nuna. Is that a rerun? This actually happened yesterday, or the day before, right? That. A live broadcast. The words stabbed at Tae.hyuk's chest like a dagger. It was a dream, so what was this? A foresight dream. Returning to the past. Or was it just a coincidence? Ha.ran gazed at Tae.hyuk with worried eyes. Tae.hyuk tried to look bright. Ha. I just said it. It came true by chance. Maybe I should go and buy a lottery ticket. Hey you really scared me. I have to go to school. Doesn't Nuna come home late at night? You should be careful at night. Prince.Nim doesn't have to worry, I'll be careful. Have fun at school. Yes, Nuna. Tae.Hyuk left the house with his bag. His laughter instantly disappeared from his face. According to his dream, Uchiol.ho shouldn't be far from here. I need to confirm if Uchiol.ho is really there. Only then will I know if that was just a dream. He felt sorry for his sister but he wouldn't be able to go to school. Chapter 2 I don't think it is a dream number 2 you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 2 I don't think it is a dream number 2. Chapter 2 I don't think it is a dream number 2 Uchiol.ho's actions after his accomplice was caught were simple. It was the same as fox hunting, if a fox's cave was lit on fire, then it would fall prey to the hunters waiting outside. If there was a definite hideout, it was better to keep hiding there. The place where Uchiol.ho is located is 20 bus stops away. A serial killer that had the whole nation in an uproar was in such close proximity. Tae.hyuk pulled out the wallet from his pocket and checked its contents. Um. It have about 3,000 won in total. It was said that a man should always have 3,000 won on him. He had no idea that would be true. It was only enough for a round dot trip bus fare. Furthermore, if he used up all of it then he would have to starve for lunch. If I had known that then I would have eaten more for breakfast. He hadn't even eaten half a bowl of stew due to thinking about Uchiol.ho. It was like in the military or the prison. It was an unspoken law that those who left food behind would soon regret it. Damn. This is just like a real criminal. It was within walking distance but Tae.hyuk decided to take the bus. It was noticeable if a student wearing a uniform was walking the streets during class time. Due to his delinquent looks, he was often picked up by police officers on patrol and lectured. Every time Ha.Ran was contacted, he would have to see her in tears. Indeed, I should take the bus. What did he want to do when he met Uchiol.ho? Tae.Hyuk's mind became complicated. What if Uchiol.ho was really at the location where he was going now? Then it would be proof that what he thought was a dream actually wasn't. Then. Would he really go to jail in five years after being falsely accused? As a result those events, his older sister Seo Ha.Ran and younger brother Seo Tae.Min would be ruined. Fuck. It is like hearing that I have a terminal illness. However, it was better to know and be prepared than to be ignorant. Tae.Hyuk got on the bus towards his destination. He pulled his baseball cap deep over his face, just in case he saw a face that he knew. Um. It is past the time to go to work so there aren't many people on the bus. 
There was only an old lady and a man with a baseball cap positioned like Tay Dot Hughes. He had bumped into the man when he got on the bus. But there was something suspicious about him. It is so empty in here, so why is he sitting next to someone? Tay Dot Hyuk, who had sat in an empty seat, turned and closely observed the two of them. It was at that moment. BR. There was a vibration from between his crotch. Tay Dot Hyuk looked around with surprise. Fuck. If anyone saw that then they would think I was a pervert. There was something in the pocket of his school uniform that was vibrating. Uh, is it a mirror? Why is it in the pocket of my uniform? It was the mirror that he used to look at himself this morning. The demon carved on the outside still looked really ominous. Tay Dot Hyuk squinted and looked at the mirror. His face was reflected but there were still some strange letters written. Crime skill. Robbery has been acquired, you can acquire one random item when bumping against another person, the probability of success depends on your dexterity. The letters came and then disappeared. Tay Dot Hyuk's mouth trembled. What is this? At the same time, new letters emerged above his head. CO Tay Dot Hyuk, dot title. God of Crime. Dot rating. Commoner, lacking conditions for upgrade. Dot skills possessed. Robbery, LV1, did I learn the robbery skill just now? Why? Why? Tay Dot Hyuk realized that the demon mirror wasn't an ordinary item. In the first place, he had clearly left this on Tay Dot Min's desk, yet it somehow ended up in his pocket. He thought that the demon looked like a true dick. A really dick. Like thing. Anyway, if the words on the demon mirror were true, then he had just learned a crime skill. Tay Dot Hyuk looked around. It wasn't difficult to find the reason. If there is a result, then there needs to be a cause. After Tay Dot Hyuk's arrival on the bus, the old lady started to snore as she dozed off. The man sitting next to her then revealed his true colors. Pickpocket. The man used careful hand techniques to prevent the old lady from waking up. He easily opened the locked handbag using a razor, and all he took out was a wallet. If Tay Dot Hyuk hadn't known that something was going to happen beforehand, then he would have thought the man's body had moved because the bus was shaking. That's how perfect the man's skill was. Tay Dot Hyuk wouldn't have noticed if he hadn't seen the word robbery on the demon mirror. What on earth is this mirror? Tay Dot Hyuk chewed on his lips. Was it truly a mirror that had a demon dwelling inside it? The pickpocket tried to get off the bus before Tay Dot Hyuk could calm his confused mind. Duck. The pickpocket was rushing like he could feel a gaze on him. Then Tay Dot Hyuk's body was lightly bumped. Once again, the demon mirror vibrated. BR. Tay Dot Hyuk made a crazy expression and looked at the mirror. Robbery has been used. You have succeeded in stealing the opponent's belongings. Dot. The pickpocket had already escaped the bus. Robbery. According to the message in the mirror, he had stolen something from the pickpocket. Tay Dot Hyuk bit his lip. I should check to see what I stole first. Tay Dot Hyuk searched through his pockets before a long wallet that he hadn't seen before emerged. Oh my god. It was as he had thought. The pickpocket had stolen the old lady's wallet then it was stolen again. In this situation, the one accused of being the criminal would be him. Tay Dot Hyuk hurriedly got off the bus. The the old lady's scream rang through the bus. Omo. My wallet is gone. Tay Dot Hyuk's eyes shook. There was no time. Tay Dot Hyuk ran through the alleys. Crazy. A pickpocket stole the old lady's wallet. And the pickpocket had the wallet stolen by Tay Dot Hyuk. If Tay Dot Hyuk had been a little late getting off the bus then he would have been arrested by the police officer on duty. What? God of crime. Trying to make a good person a criminal. Tay Dot Hyuk angrily threw the demon mirror with all his strength towards the ground. Jiak. Wah. Rather than the fragile mirror breaking, the cement ground was the one that cracked. 
this time he stepped on it. Yuk. It hurt like he had kicked a stone pillar. Tae.hyuk spat out curses and threw the demon mirror into a trash bin. He then turned his body and left this place. Asterisk 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 Tae.hyuk was worried about what to do with the old lady's wallet. It seemed like he was becoming a criminal without his consent. Just like those guys, in his dream, Tae.hyuk had been imprisoned for ten years. Unless he was in solitary confinement, it was impossible not to meet other criminals. There were even those criminals convicted of atrocities. Yu Ho was one of those people. They were monsters in a human guise. Now, he wasn't too sure that it was a dream. At any rate, he was a falsely accused death row inmate in his dream. For ten years, he had struggled to escape from that place. It had been a really painful, long time. Would it have been easier if he knew that he had been postponing death for ten years? So if he became a criminal here, it would be like denying his very existence. I need to find its owner but how? He could go to the police station and give them the wallet. They would thank him for surrendering, and then they would handcuff him. Well. It is best to just put it in the mailbox. Inside the wallet were 20 checkbooks worth 100,000 won each and 10 50,000 won bills. The total was 2.5 million won. There was also identification. He would definitely put it in the mailbox that belonged to the owner. She is richer than I thought. His heart shook at the tidy sum. It was enough to buy some new clothes for his troubled sister. C.O. Tae.Hyuk. What are you thinking? I don't think that Nuna would like that. Tae.Hyuk pulled a 50,000 won bill from the wallet. This was lost property, so to speak. If he returned it to the owner, then 10% was his. Then he put the wallet in the mailbox. I can buy Samgyopsal and grill it with Nuna. He thought as he placed the money in his pocket. He froze in shock. Crazy. It was the demon mirror that he had obviously tossed in the bin. Chapter 3 I don't think it is a dream number 3 you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 3 I don't think it is a dream number 3. Chapter 3 I don't think it is a dream number 3 Tae.hyuk eventually gave up on getting rid of the mirror. It kept returning to his pocket, yet it wasn't a possessed doll. It just informed him of the situation through messages and vibrations. It didn't like seem like it would do him any harm. I guess I should go visit a shaman later. He put aside the mirror for now, and decided to think about Yuchiol.ho first. Wasn't Yuchiol.ho hiding in an empty church? If he had a smartphone, then he would search with a map app service. However, Tae.hyuk currently only had the flip phone that his sister had given him. He had no choice but to go to a nearby PC room to search online. Despite the fact that it was currently class time, the PC room was still crowded with people. He noticed a few students in their uniforms. They are also playing hooky. Tae.hyuk paid the fee at the counter, then sat down and turned on the computer. The location of the church. Crazy. There are more than twenty. The good news was that he knew that it was an empty church. Tae.hyuk called the churches one by one to check. After a few minutes, he was able to get the information that he wanted. There were two churches that didn't answer the phone. He is certainly in one of them. Tae.hyuk moved in a hurry. The first place he went to wasn't correct. If that was true, then Uchiol.ho was definitely at the second location. Bingo. The curtains were firmly closed over each window. However, he felt a strange presence inside. The whole alley was half empty due to redevelopment. The church where Uchiol.ho was hiding also seemed to be ruined. Certainly, no one would ever imagine that an escaped prisoner would be hiding in a run-down church. First of all, he had to confirm that Uchiol.ho was inside. How can I talk to him? He couldn't knock on the door and ask for Yuchio. Ho SSI. It just wasn't possible. At that moment, 
he came up with a good idea. Tae.hyuk got the address of the church from the mailbox and headed to a Chinese restaurant that was nearby. It was a place where he used to do deliveries when skipping school. It was lunch time. The phone was ringing, but the delivery motorcycles weren't visible. As expected, they are swamped with orders. Tae.hyuk called the Chinese restaurant. He made an order for Jijangmian and gave the address of the church. He also made sure to sound annoyed at the fact that the restaurant was swamped with orders, and that the delivery would be delayed. Uh, is it Tae.hyuk? Did you come for a job again? Well, that is good, as there are a lot of deliveries. The boss greeted Tae.hyuk as he opened the door to the Chinese restaurant. Nope. I'm here to eat Jijangmian. I, don't be like that. I'm unbelievably busy right now, please, just do 10. It is urgent so I'll give you an hourly wage of 10,001. Tae.hyuk smiled pleasantly. Then I'll do it for just one hour. Call. Tae.hyuk changed into his work clothes and picked up the iron boxes containing the deliveries. Let's do a test. He decided to test if the robbery skill he just learned could also be used against the public. As he passed the boss sitting at the counter, Tae.hyuk bumped against his body. Then the crime skill was activated normally. Robbery has been used. You have succeeded in stealing the opponent's belongings. What did I steal? Tae.hyuk put his hand in his pocket and pulled out a strange bundle of hair. What is this? He looked at the boss and saw that his rich head of hair was gone. Boss.nim, isn't he obviously in his thirties? Tae.hyuk's eyes flashed. This fell here. Ack. When was this stripped off? T.Tae.hyuk, don't tell anybody about this. I'll add another 5,001 to your hourly wage. The two men exchanged conspiratorial glances. Asterisk 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 your Jijangmian has arrived. Tae.hyuk knocked on the firmly locked door and shouted. There was no reaction from inside the church. He started using more strength to knock on the door. There was still no reaction, so Tae.hyuk started shouting. Aish. Delivery. Please come out quickly. In the end, the person couldn't bear it. The closed curtain opened a little bit. The person inside was checking to see if it really was a genuine Chinese delivery person outside. The iron door opened, revealing a man in clergy attire that could be seen from within the shadows. I never ordered any Jijangmian. Aish. It's right here. Well. I happen to be hungry. How much is it? The man opened the door a bit wider and slowly came out. Tae.hyuk nearly dropped the iron box he was carrying. Yu Chi Ho. A murderer who killed seven people. It was him. He has a beard now, and is also in clergy attire, but it is definitely him. Tae.hyuk's clothes became damp with sweat. The fact that Yu Chi Ho was here was evidence that what Tae.hyuk saw wasn't a simple dream. Then. Crazy. Then, in the next five years, I will be framed and taken to prison. Fuck off. Wait a minute. Something suddenly popped into Tae.hyuk's head. It was different from the time when he was framed without knowing anything. Right now, Tae.hyuk knew what would happen in the next 15 years. And. I don't know precisely what this power is, but there is also the mirror. Due to the power of the mirror, he was able to learn the robbery skill from the pickpocket. If that was so, then couldn't other things be learned? Perhaps Tae.hyuk could change the harsh reality that he remembered. First of all, I have to find out how to learn skills. Tae.hyuk remembered when he first learned robbery. He ran into the pickpocket as he got on the bus, and got the robbery skill. Shortly afterwards, he witnessed the pickpocket stealing the old lady's wallet. The condition required would be one of them. My body feels a bit uncomfortable. Can you come in and put the food on the floor? Yu Chi Ho said with a smile. Tae.hyuk looked at his eyes, and saw the eyes of a beast determined to kill. 
I cannot relax for even a second. If he did something even slightly suspicious, then he would surely be killed by Yu Chiol.ho. Tae.hyuk recalled the three murders after Yu Chiol.ho escaped. He suspected that they had noticed his identity and stabbed them dozens of times with a knife. Yu Chiol.ho was very quick. Tae.hyuk wouldn't be able to get away if he tried to escape. Then, he had to perfectly pretend to be a Chinese delivery person. Tae.hyuk told Yu Chiol.ho with a casual expression. It is 5001. Wait a minute. Money. There were no signs that Yu Chiol.ho doubted Tae.hyuk's identity. Tae.hyuk smiled pleasantly. It was good that I came in the disguise of a Chinese deliveryman. People always let down their guard when they deal with people like couriers and delivery men. Tae.hyuk remembered that Yu Chiol.ho was previously arrested after being reported by a pizza delivery person. Yes, the money is here. Yu Chiol.ho pulled out a 10,001 bill from his pocket. Tae.hyuk accepted it and gave back the change. We're currently swamped with deliveries, so I will come back later to pick up the bowl after an hour. And the door closed. Tae.hyuk sighed with relief. He had safely escaped from the clutches of a crazy killer. Try to enjoy it, as it will be your last meal in society. Tae.hyuk laughed. If he had known this before, then he would have also given you Chiol.ho some Tangsuyuk. Chapter 4 I don't think it is a dream number 4 you are listening at novel full.audio. Chapter 4 I don't think it is a dream number 4. Chapter 4 I don't think it is a dream number 4, it seems that I can't learn skills just from touching another person's body. Tae.hyuk had deliberately touched Yu Chiol.ho's hand as he was giving him the money. However, there was no reaction from the mirror. Then what is it? Surely it wasn't just the robbery skill. There was just too much that he didn't know. Let's just think about Yu Chiol.ho first. It was impossible for him to catch the killer directly. He didn't even know the success rate of robbery, so it was suicidal to act while believing in it. Then there was only one thing left. The prosecutors assured that they would be able to catch Yu Chiol.ho tomorrow, however, according to Tae.hyuk's dream, Yu Chiol.ho would start fleeing across the country for more than a month. Within that time period, three innocent civilians would be killed. The most important thing was for Tae.hyun to deviate from the predetermined date. If Yu Chiol.ho were caught today, then the three victims that were supposed to die would be saved in the end. He hoped that he could change the future. Tae.hyuk hurried into action. Yes. I will call a reliable detective. Tae.hyuk thought about who to contact while searching through his pockets. He then pulled out his handphone to make a call. There is no more battery. It was an old dot fashion flip phone that he inherited from his sister. Even if he charged it every day, it was still a junk phone that would quickly run out of power. Tae.hyuk went to a nearby convenience store and charged his handphone. A few minutes would be enough to make one call. The TV in the store was showing news about Yu Chiol.ho, finally, there is a reward of 50 million won. However, his location is still unknown. Bounty. Tae.hyuk almost fell backwards at that word. Why didn't I think of it before? He is an escaped prisoner, so naturally there will be a reward. Come to think of it, his brother had said something similar this morning. At first, this was simply to check if he was in a dream or not. Then he suddenly learned a strange crime skill. But this fact wasn't too important. 50 million won. It was an amount that allowed him to not only buy clothes for his hard dot working sister, but also allowed them to get out of the monthly rented semi dot basement room. The person he called would be someone who would obtain a huge merit. Therefore, he wanted to give it to someone he knew. Yes. I will call Cho Kong. Suk Young. He was a crime squad investigator who had questioned Tae Dot Hyuk several times in the past. He was one of the few people who treated Tae Dot Hyuk as a human instead of a death row inmate. His promotion luck was quite bad, 
despite have a vibrant sense of justice, so he was still in the field despite being in his late forties. He should be roughly in his thirties right now. After confirming that the battery was charged to a certain extent, Tae.hyuk pressed a number, this is the gang.dong police station. I wish to speak to Detective Cho Kong.suk. Yes, I understand. There was a moment of silence before Cho Kong.suk's voice was heard, yes, the phone has been changed. I am Cho Kong.suk of the gang.dong police station second team. Will I really get a reward if I catch you Chiol.ho? Tae.hyuk asked directly that IT has to be directly. Or can it just be a crucial tip that leads to the arrest? Hey, are you a high school student? Why are you making a prank call? If I catch you then I'll be angry. It was a reaction that Tae.hyuk had expected from Cho Kong.suk. He was more like a neighborhood hyung than a detective. It is real. But is it in cash? What are the tax percentages? Hyung is busy so I'm hanging up. It is definitely you Chiol.ho. Isn't this a situation where you have to find every grain of rice that you chiol? Ho shed while eating. How about just checking it out? That I will do it. I hope it is real or I will one punch you so hard that three teeth will be knocked out. Yes. How did you even see him? I made a delivery. Even an escaped prisoner has to eat. Tae.hyuk smiled widely. Despite his crude way of speaking, Cho Kong.suk was a thorough detective. He would check any minor clue directly. Tae.hyuk told Kong.suk his location. Asterisk 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 fuck. It is real. To think that he was hiding in this type of place. Son of a bitch. He used the walkie.talkie, requesting that reinforcements be sent from the investigation headquarters. I found where he is hiding. Location. Kong.suk patted Tae.hyuk's head. Sorry for doubting you. No problem. Please be sure to catch him. Then. Watch as I catch him. Tae.hyuk licked the ice cream Kong.suk bought him and watched the arrest operation. The rest happened quickly. The investigation had been in trouble because there were no witnesses to report the location. But now they knew exactly where he was hiding. Cho Kong.suk acted quickly. After contacting the special investigation headquarters, dozens of police cars arrived. Tae.hyuk watched in interest as they broke through the door of the building. Yuchiol.ho took off the clothes that he was wearing and started to run away quickly. Cho Kong.suk threw himself onto Yuchiol.ho, like a hawk hunting its prey. Yuchiol.ho was handcuffed and started screaming. Fuck. Which son of a bitch knew I was here? Tell me. I'll bite off the flesh on their bones. Yuchiol.ho was taken away by five police officers while still furiously struggling. Tae.hyuk just watched as he put the last bit of ice cream in his mouth. Ah, cool. It was sweet and delicious. After Yuchiol.ho was dragged out, the police entered the church to find any remaining evidence. Cho Kong.suk continued walking around with a walkie.talkie to check if there were any more threats to Tae.hyuk, the witness. Tae.hyuk thought it was good that the tip went to him. Ah, Detective.nim. You are rejuvenated. You don't even have the potbelly anymore. It was so different from the Cho Kong.suk he remembered that Tae.hyuk couldn't help laughing. Only the eyes that burned with the flames of justice were the same. Detective Cho Kong.suk. You should now receive a special promotion. Brat. If you are facing any trouble, contact Young. But you don't look like the type who will be easily bullied. Ah. Have you eaten lunch? Shall Hyung buy you a bowl of jajangmyeon? Wah. I gave you the top merit for catching this criminal, yet you only want to buy me a bowl of jajangmyeon. Well. Do you want Tang Suyuk as well? Nope. I've actually already eaten. Instead, there is something else I need your help with. Help me get the bounty money, as this is my first time. 
Cho Kong Dot Suk chuckled. He seemed to like the bold Tae Dot Hyuk. Ha ha. Doesn't it sound like you're planning to do this again? Dot. Poo ha ha. What is with that expression? Anyway. You are Tae Dot Hyuk. Really, thank you. Yu Chi Ol Dot Ho, that bastard, is a really dangerous guy. Had he escaped, then he would have definitely started killing again. We were able to catch him without any injury, thanks to your report. Tae.Hyuk felt something hot rising from within his heart. He hadn't realized because he had been focused on the reward. Tae.Hyuk had saved the lives of three future murder victims. The tragedy in the future had changed. It was at that moment. The mirror vibrated. Eh, I didn't bump into anyone. The crime skill robbery seemed to activate regardless of Tae.Hyuk's will. However, there was the condition that he needed to touch the other person. He pulled out the mirror and checked the sentences. 3. You can use the affinity points to enhance crime skills or activate hidden attributes. What is this? Affinity points have been acquired. Chapter 5. This is all thanks to good neighbors you are listening at novel full .audio. Chapter 5 This is all thanks to good neighbors. Chapter 5 This is all thanks to good neighbors after studying it all night, Tae.Hyuk had finally figured out the usage of the mirror to a certain extent. It was basically the same as a smartphone with a touch screen. He could touch the screen to get any desired information, and even to change any of its settings. Tae.Hyuk could call up a list of accessible skills by clicking on the Crime Skills tab. Robbery was currently the only one available. Furthermore, Tae.Hyuk had three affinity points, which he recalled seeing in a game before. The acquired points could be used to strengthen skills. Once he clicked on an item, several lists came up. He could steal things from a person who didn't even bump into him, pick the item that he wanted, etc. They all seemed like useful skill enhancements, however, the number of affinity points needed varied for each enhancement. The one that was most expensive, at a total of 10 points, was stealing several items at once. The other enhancements ranged from 1 to 5 points. Tae.Hyuk decided to test the affinity points. First of all, I have to raise this. Robbery was the skill that stole the object of a person he bumped into. The slightest mistake meant he could be seen as a pickpocket. Fortunately, there was an attribute to avoid that. Activation Timing Adjustment After selecting the desired attribute, he pressed the Enhance button, and the screen flashed with a message. Dot it is like I am watching a B-grade mobile game. Surely it won't fail. Insufficient Affinity Points Ack What? It requires 5 points to get Activation Timing Adjustment. He needed two more points in order to prevent the crime skill from being triggered at an inconvenient time in the future. The problem was that he didn't know how to acquire additional points. As Tae.Hyuk grabbed his head in distress, somebody suddenly spoke to him. Hey, Tae.Hyuk. It is Hyung. Cho Kong.Suk, who was wearing jeans and an Aloha T.Shirt, opened the cafe door and waved out to him. He was also wearing red sunglasses. Tae.Hyuk instinctively wanted to leave the cafe but endured that notion. Kong.Suk, despite his abhorrent taste in fashion, had come to help. Tae.Hyuk greeted him. Hello, Kong.Suk Young. Kong.Suk sat in a chair and said. I paid some attention to what I am wearing today. Hoo. Thanks to you, I received a holiday. I am planning to go to a club in the evening. Going to a club. Tae.Hyuk had a headache. It is really cool. I thought you were a model. Ha <laughs> ha. This guy. Won't you do well in your social life? He was tall and had big, broad shoulders, so his social life wasn't bad. However, he seemed to be more popular with men than with women. Auntie. A cup of coffee over here please. Keep it coming. Here, you have to go to the counter and order it. I dot I see. 
I've never been here before. Kong.Suk scratched his head and ordered a cup of iced coffee. After waiting for a while, the clerk came with an iced coffee and some ice cubes. Kong.Suk took a gulp and said, I still don't know the difference between iced coffee and cold coffee. The tea room coffee seemed to suit his taste more. Thank you for helping me today. Tae.Hyuk bowed his head. Today's meetup was regarding money. If a high school student accepted the reward money, then twisted, greedy dung flies would gather. If Detective Kong.Suk claimed it, then such people could be effectively prevented. He was sincerely grateful for Kong.Suk's help. Well, I can take a vacation thanks to you. Then let's go straight away. Hey. Sit down. There is an order in the works. Kong.Suk started to explain. I think you should know most of it to a certain extent, but I'll explain the details. Although the basic reward is 50 million won, you won't be able to receive all of it. Tae.Hyuk nodded. It was quite silly, but he had to pay a certain amount under the pretext of taxes. 15% will be taken as the withholding tax. Then there is another 22% for the unearned income tax. Ultimately, you get 63% of the original reward. Tae.Hyuk already knew that 15% would be taken. However, he didn't account for the unearned income tax, the tax on profits obtained without working. He had worked hard to earn this money. Tae.Hyuk felt wronged but as it was the law, he couldn't do anything about it. In the end, I will still get 31.5 million won. That's right, that is still a lot of money. It is even more than my regular salary. You have a terribly small salary. Hey, don't say that. Anyway, what will you do with that money? Don't spend it in strange places. Do you want Hyung to help you with installment savings? Tae.Hyuk decided to tell the truth. Well. In fact, my parents died in an accident and a few debts behind. We can try and give up the inheritance but it will be of no use as it was dragged into my Nuna's name. In the end, I am living with my Nuna in a semi-basement rented room. My Nuna's health keeps on getting worse due to the bad air, however. I was planning on using the bounty money to move us out of the semi-basement and into a better home. Well. This brat. A real man. Kong.Suk's voice trembled. He thought that after Tae.Hyuk received the money, he would it to buy things he wanted or to travel overseas, Kong.Suk was proven wrong, however, and was deeply impressed. Kong.Suk pounded on Tae.Hyuk's back. He liked this type of heart. N.O, however, Tae.Hyuk inwardly let out a shriek. Once again, his crime skill was triggered. Robbery has been used. You have failed to steal the opponent's belongings. Fortunately, it was a failure. Even if it was a mistake, stealing Kong.Suk's wallet would be the end. Luckily it failed. Whack. However, Kong.Suk hadn't finished pounding his back. Pang pang pang. Robbery was triggered each time. Failure, ah again failure. The success rate was lower than he thought. But no matter how low the probability was, as long as it wasn't zero, it would eventually succeed. Robbery has been used. You have succeeded in stealing the opponent's belongings. Damn it. I stole a detective's property. People were sentenced for two years in prison for special larcenies. Eh. Sorry. Are you in pain? Kong.Suk saw that Tae.Hyuk's face turning sour, and had stopped pounding his back. Fortunately, robbery stopped after only succeeding once. This is really crazy. I have to do something about this. All he needed to do was bump into someone to activate robbery. While this was sometimes useful, more difficult situations like this would occur. Um. But what did I steal? Please, just let it not be the wallet. If that happened, then he wouldn't be able to get out of it. He searched through his pockets while trying to maintain an expression that was as casual as possible. Fortunately, it wasn't the wallet that was stolen. 
Unfortunately, the item stolen was even worse than a wallet. Crazy. Handcuffs. It wasn't a toy, and it wasn't an SM item that IT was the real, original thing. It was made of a very solid alloy so it would be a big deal if he accidentally put it on. How do I prevent him from noticing? Unfortunately, the only crime skill available to him was robbery. He would only steal the other person's possession if he used it. The opposite, returning the other's possession, was impossible. It would be possible if he was a skilled pickpocket, but unfortunately, Tae.hyuk wasn't considered one. Come to think about it, there was no attribute regarding returning the possession. Certainly, it wouldn't be considered an act that fell under robbery. It can't be helped. Let's just go by the book. Ah. Hyung.nim, you dropped this. Tae.hyuk deliberately dropped the handcuffs onto the ground and pretended to pick them up. He was tense as sweat dripped down his back. Damn. This type of lie would only work on a fool. However, there was no other alternative. Tae.hyuk, this brat. As expected, he saw through my lies. Really, thank you. Aish, when did this fall? Last time I lost it, I had to spend 200,000 won to buy a new one from the stolen goods department. I'm glad you found it this time. It passed. Furthermore, it was a stolen property. That is a relief. Kong.suk wasn't the neighborhood young type, but the neighborhood fool type. Anyway, a deposit on a house would be difficult with 30 million won. The housing prices have gone insanely expensive these days. Are you living together with just your nuna? Nope. My younger brother as well. Three people. Well, you should have at least two rooms. Will the house be near here? Yes. Nuna works at a factory nearby, so it needs to be within a walking distance. Kong.suk was thinking with all his strength as if it was his own problem. Although Tae.hyuk already knew that Kong.suk was overflowing with kindness and openness, he hadn't expected this level of sincerity. It is good that I'm entrusting it to Kong.suk. Kong.suk let out a strange moan as he searched through a real estate app. You'll need at least 30 million won to rent a house. Damn. There are no taxes set on the bounties from companies. Shouldn't the country pay more when such a big criminal is caught? Wait. A bounty from companies. I'm certain that a big company put out a bounty for you Chiol.ho. He couldn't remember exactly where. Where was it? Ah. Sungjin Group. Tae.hyuk carefully told this fact to Kong.suk. Kong.suk was delighted, as if it was his own work. Yes. Let's jump and catch two things today. We'll go get the bounty from the government first. Do we receive it from Central Bank? It is like the lottery. Did you bring what I asked you to? Tae.hyuk nodded. They were copies of his ID card and a bank book in his own name. If you send that to the person in charge, then it will be deposited by tomorrow. Originally, the reward would be received from Central Bank, but it is like Tae.hyuk said. There would be problems if you went there. Certainly. Lotto prizes would be received there so there would be dung flies buzzing around all day. Ha ha. Yes, dung flies. There were people looking for investors, saying they had a surefire item. Businessmen asking for donations. In addition, there were gangsters with crude and rough words. Various groups would be gathered like flies. Kong.suk gathered the papers that Tae.hyuk gave him. I'll give this to the person in charge. Kong.suk Young, I really appreciate what you've done so far. No, it's fine. Anyway, I will be interviewed as the detective who caught you Chiol.ho and it'll come out on the evening news. Oh. You will be a celebrity. However, he wondered what type of clothing would be worn for the interview. Surely, he wouldn't show up on TV like that. Tae.hyuk had an ominous feeling. One thing is over. It ended earlier than he thought. 
Tae.hyuk said with a satisfied expression, then let's storm the Sungjin group. Well. Can we do that? Of course. I made a key tip in catching you Chiol.ho. Kong.sukyung is the one who caught you Chiol.ho. If we can't go, then who can? I.is that so. Then we will go straight to headquarters. I know the location. You sound like you worked there or something. Tae.hyuk just smiled instead of answering. Worked there. It was the place where he was previously framed. Chapter 6 This is all thanks to Good Neighbors Number 2 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 6 This is all thanks to Good Neighbors Number 2. Chapter 6 This is all thanks to Good Neighbors Number 2 You came for the bounty. Yes. I am the person who caught you Chiol.ho, Andy is the one who made the crucial tip. A man in an Aloha tee dot shirt and a person wearing a school uniform came forward, claiming that they caught you Chiol.ho. The receptionist made a strange expression. I haven't heard about something like this. Cough. Is that so? While Kong.suk made a trouble expression, Tae.hyuk intervened. Director Cho Hun.il of the Personnel Administration Department. I mean, team leader Cho Hun.il. Maybe he will know. He is the person directly involved in the bounty. Team leader Cho Hun.il. Ah, uh, yes. I understand. I'll check it straight away. As soon as the name of the person in charge was mentioned, the receptionist was surprised and hurriedly made a call. Kong.suk's eyes widened as he saw it. Wah! How did you know that? Didn't you hear that I deliver for a Chinese restaurant? Yes. I heard about it during a delivery. You deliver here as well? Yes. It is quite the famous restaurant. I see. Kong.suk's eyes shone. How delicious would the food be if even a large company ordered it? A detective and his Jajangmian had an inseparable relationship. He vowed that he would order from the restaurant to try it out one day. Sorry to have kept you waiting. The receptionist's attitude had flipped on its end. They bowed respectfully and guided the two people to a VIP room. Surprisingly, it wasn't team leader Cho Hun.il who was waiting there. There was a beautiful woman, so beautiful that it wouldn't be strange to see her on TV, sitting in a chair. Hello. The woman in the chair bowed her head. She had neatly cropped, shoulder-length hair. I apologize for greeting you while sitting down. She pointed to the wheelchair next to the chair. Her legs are disabled. She was unable to walk, so it was natural for her to greet them while sitting down. I am Yung Yuri. I hear that the both of you have caught you Chiol.ho. Kong.suk was so nervous in front of the pale beauty that he couldn't speak for a while. Tae.hyuk then pressed against his side and exclaimed. Ah. This schoolboy. CO Tae.hyuk made a crucial tip that led to his arrest. I am Cho Kong.suk of the Kong.dong police station second team. Kong.suk pulled out his business card from his wallet. The woman tilted her head in confusion. Even that small movement made her look beautiful. I thought that detectives would be more upright than this. Ha <laughs> ha. I am a bit unique. He completely fell for her. However, Hyung falling for her is a type of crime. At the most, she looked like a university student. The age difference between she and Kong.suk was at least one zodiac cycle large. By the way, who is she? This was the VIP room of Sungjin Group, the largest corporation in South Korea. She definitely wasn't any ordinary woman. The president's secretary. I don't think so. She gave off a strange feeling of elegance. Yuri bowed her head. Yu Chiol Ho. Thank you for catching him. I want him to be judged by the law. Kong Dot Suk made a pleasant smile when he heard her saying, judged by the law. While she was still speaking calmly, Yuri had strange emotions showing in her eyes. Anger. 
hate. He was confused over why she had such feelings. Although he was just sent here, Tadat Hyuk had worked here as a security guard for two years. It was the first time seeing or hearing of someone named Yung Yuri, however. She was either unrelated to the company, or a super VIP that Tadat Hyuk could never approach. Tadat Hyuk thought about the identity of the woman. He might be able to find a connection. If a bounty was issued, then he must have leaked core secrets from the company. Either that, or he heard a VIP. However, Yu Ho wasn't someone who would have any confidential information to leak. This meant that one of his victims was related to Sungjin Group. Usually, the victim's identity wasn't exposed to the media, especially if the person was a big business owner. However, Tae.hyuk Hyuk happened to be Yu Ho's neighbor. Yes. He boasted about killing the daughter of a very important person. The name. At that moment, the name popped into Tae Hyuk's head. Currently, he was the president that oversaw one of Sungjin Group's divisions, and also one that would climb up to be the vice chairman of the company in the future. Vice Chairman Yung Guan. Mok. That reminded him, Yung Yuri had the same surname. Maybe. Are you perhaps President Yung Kwan. Mok's daughter? Yung Yuri's eyes widened at Tae Hyuk's words. H. How did you know? I work at a Chinese restaurant. Sometimes he comes in to eat Jijangmian. He has been a regular for 20 years. I noticed that you resemble him. My father and Jijangmian. At any rate, I wasn't trying to hide it. I will greet you again. I am Yung Yuri, the director for the second public relations support team. The daughter of a president of a large company. Kong Dot Suk's mouth hung open from where he watching, while Tae Dot Hyuk nodded as if he already expected it. Well, because she got to her position at such a young age, most would think she was gliding off her father's success. That's why she hides it. If Nuna is involved, then you must be related to one of Yu Chi Old Dot Ho's victims. Yung Yuri laughed at being called Nuna. Then her expression became cold and hard when she heard Yu Chi Old Dot Ho's name. Yes. Mayuni. Please don't tell this to the press. Of course, I'd obstruct you if you tried. Yuri's face looked like the manager of a big company. Tae.hyuk Hyuk nodded. Kan Dot Suk replied awkwardly like a broken robot. Yes. I will be careful. Then sit down and relax. I'll get to the point. Tay. Hyuk and Kong Dot Suk sat down as a tea set came out. There were also sweets prepared in advance. Please eat. Kong Dot Suk instantly put the sweets in his mouth and swallowed hard without chewing. The sweets are delicious. Ahaha. Ah. I made them myself. So please eat more. Ah, uh, yep. So, about the bounty. C.O.T. Dot Hyuk who played a crucial role in catching him, will receive 100 million won. Of course, you won't need to pay any taxes since it is a reward. 100 million. That was enough to get a decent home in the area. Tae.hyuk received the bounty, but Kang.suk was the one who made a fuss. What Tae.hyuk? Amazing. 100 million won. Let's see, with that money. You can get a 3 LDK house. Tae.hyuk Hyuk bowed with gratitude and opened his mouth. It was lacking. Yung Yuri Nuna. I'm talking to the director of the public relations support team, not a family member of a victim. H. Ha, the bounty money should be 200 million, not 100 million. No, it is clearly 100 million per person. Yung Yuri stuttered due to her confusion. She had thought of him as a cute younger brother, and never imagined that he would insist on doubling the money like this. One hundred million per person is correct. But clearly, we, are two people. Surely there aren't any restrictions on a detective receiving a reward. There clearly wasn't one stated. T that that is correct but. Normally, detectives didn't receive rewards for catching criminals. Of course, the criminal was able to be caught due to my tip. 
However, he probably wouldn't have been caught if it wasn't for Kong Dot Suk Young. He believed in the report of a high school student and went to investigate. Kong Dot Suk Young also threw his body to catch the criminal when he was running. So, did I catch him alone? Certainly. Ah. I thought I was talking to a director of a big company. So let's look at it from the perspective of the Sunjin Group. Isn't the Sunjin Group launching a new crime prevention business? Its concept is justice, which is why you put up bounties to catch criminals. You actually know so much. I accidentally heard the president talking. Ah, father. At any rate, I don't think it would harm a company to support a detective who caught a criminal. Kong Dot Suk Young is even appearing on this evening's news as the detective who caught the criminal. If Kong Dot Suk Young receives the reward then it will be quite the picture. What do you think? Tae Dot Hyuk stopped for a moment. Young Yuri was watching Tae Dot Hyuk with wide eyes. Kong Dot Suk was already half collapsed. The justice you have created. We will protect it with all our might. The detective who caught the criminal had the whole country in an uproar. This was including the big company that was supporting him. It was a chance to completely change any negative image about the Sunjin group. The money spent on corporate image making every year was in the tens of billions of won. When looking at that fact, 100 million wasn't a large sum of money. Tae.Hyuk's words were strangely persuasive. Could you please wait for a moment? I will contact my father. Young Yuri's hands were shaking. She picked up the intercom on the table and called someone. Ah, father. This is Yuri. About the bounty for today. Because. Yuri explained for almost ten minutes. Yes, I understand. Of course, I will fill out a report. Yes. A high school student. That's right. I'm sure. After finishing the conversation, Young Yuri slowly took a few deep breaths. Then she smiled brightly and made the victory sign. Hooray! Kong Dot Suk looked like he was going to cry. He had unexpectedly gained 100 million won. Tae Dot Hyuk inwardly smiled with satisfaction. Anyways, he had obtained a bounty of 100 million. It would be good to make the most of that, now that Kong Dot Suk would completely become his protector. He obtained a trustworthy person with someone else's money. It is all thanks to Vice President. Nim. The words he said about Yung Kwan Dot Mok were half true. Of course, Tae Dot Hyuk had seen him when working as a security guard here. Furthermore, it wasn't now but 20 years ago that he went to eat Jijangmyeon. The chef still boasted about serving the president of a large company. The manner in which he managed to learn about the new business was a lie, because he actually had memories of the future. Young Yuri didn't seem to have the personality to talk about her father's mistakes. In the first place, her title was exaggerated. Her father had probably given it to her in order to protect her. The evidence was that Tae Dot Hyuk, who had been working here for two years, never saw her. Warwick. Tae Dot Hyuk, Kong Dot Suk hugged Tae Dot Hyuk so tightly that it felt like his bones were going to break. Hyung. I'm choking. Brat. It is so touching. Really, thank you. 100 million, 100 million. I think I can get married if I have this much money. He would have to find a person first. Tae Dot Hyuk glanced at Kong Dot Suk but didn't say it. I'll contact you directly through the gang. Dong police station. Ah. You might have to do some interviews or CF shoots for corporate promotion. I'll have to ask the chief first, but it will probably be a positive answer. At any rate, congratulations, Detective. Nim. You have received 100 million won. This is all thanks to my younger brother. Ha ha. Tae. Hyuk, Kong. Suk hugged Tae. Hyuk this time pounding him on the back as well. Robbery has been used. You have succeeded in stealing the opponent's belongings. N.N.O. Tae.Hyuk couldn't resist crying out loud. D.D. Do you not like it? That's not it. 
the crime skill was triggered. Additionally, this time it succeeded without any failures. Tae.hyuk searched through his pockets. He touched a somewhat damp piece of cloth. He took care not to be noticed by Kong.suk and Yuri while checking it. His expression instantly became rotten. Crazy. Panties. He managed to steal a piece of clothing that someone was wearing. Robbery was scary. Kong.suk started dancing without being aware that his underwear was gone. It was the joy of winning a lottery. In fact, Tae.hyuk was the same. 100 million won, a jackpot. Yes. I should obtain a house so I can surprise Nuna. Obviously, it would help Kong.suk as well. Chapter 7 This is all thanks to Good Neighbors Number 3 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 This is all thanks to Good Neighbors Number 3 Chapter 7 This is all thanks to Good Neighbors Number 3 CO Hot. Ran left work 30 minutes later than usual. Dovi Ko, after finishing her work, she usually cleaned up the things that the other workers didn't. Today, however, the workload was greater than usual. My younger brothers will be waiting. She often felt uneasy when walking down dark streets. She wondered if she was doing well as a parent. She worked 12 hours a day, and yet still couldn't afford to buy good clothes for her brothers. Cough. She suddenly coughed. She had inhaled heavy dust all day at the factory. In addition, she lived in a cold, damp place where that didn't receive any sunlight, so she always had a cold. Still, tomorrow is my payday. Let's have a samgyeopsal party. Her younger brothers would be able to eat their fill. She felt strength surging when she thought about her younger brothers. Eh, that person is. There was a familiar shadow in the alley. Hmm, Tae.hyuk. Um, how did you know? Nuna knows everything. Ha.ran smiled at her brother who came out to meet her when she came home late from work. Tae.hyuk said bluntly. Why are you so late? I thought I was going to die from the cold while waiting. Let's hurry. Yes. Isn't it cold? Ha.ran suddenly ran to Tae.hyuk and grabbed his arm. Robbery has been used. You have failed in stealing the opponent's belongings. Ugh. Fortunately, it failed. Ah, why are you doing this again? Tae.hyuk turned his head, but didn't exactly hate it. He took off his coat and put it on Ha.ran. Ha.ran smiled sweetly. Although her brother always showed a rough face, she knew that his heart was warmer than anyone else's. Ah, uh, right. Wear this. Tae.hyuk gave her a blindfold. Ha.rank tilted her head. Is this your hobby these days? It's not like that. Today is Nuna's birthday, so I've prepared a surprise party. Oh. Party. Ha.rank's eyes shone in excitement. Her heart was still that of a teenage girl, after all. Her eyes were covered as her brother guided her. It should have taken them a long time to arrive at their home, though. Unexpectedly, they arrived at their destination in a matter of minutes. We're here. Ha.ran slowly took off the blindfold and opened her eyes. Wah, a good home. It was like a house seen in a drama, a spacious three-room house. Additionally, there was even a luxurious sofa and a hanging chandelier. There was also a TV that seemed to be 50 inches wide. Ha.ran asked just to make sure. Did you borrow a friend's house for the birthday party? No. This is our house. What does that mean? Come on, everybody has been waiting. We should go inside. Tae.hyuk grabbed Ha.ran's hand and dragged her inside. He then brought her to a room with a sign that said, CO Ha.ran. There was a great cheer as soon as the door opened. Happy birthday Nuna. Congratulations on your birthday. Bang. Bang. Firecrackers popped out. Ha.ran covered her mouth in surprise. She was so shocked that she couldn't even scream. 
Hadut Ran looked around the room. It was a dream room with a frilly bed and even cabinets. If she slept in here, then she would always feel like a princess. T. T. Min Ah. And who are you? Inside the room, her younger brother, T. Min, and a big stranger were both wearing a cone hat. Ah. This is Cho Kong. Suk Young. He helped me out quite a lot. Once T. Hyuk introduced Kong. Suk, Ha. Ran greeted him with a bow. Ha. -ha. Hello. I've heard a lot about you from Tae Dot Hyuk. I am Cho Kong Dot Suk of the Gang Dot Dong Police Station Second Team. Detectives. Tae Dot Hyuk said in a voice so small that only Ha Dot Ran could hear. He is just a neighborhood fool. Ah, this child. Have you eaten dinner yet? There isn't much, but let's eat. There were beef steaks and a gorgeous cake. There was even a salad made of various fruits. The recipient of this party was rather confused. Ha Dot Ran thought it might be a dream and pinched herself on the arm. A hat. Fortunately, it wasn't a dream. Tae Dot Hyuk what's going on? What is this house? Ah. It is like this. Tae Dot Hyuk explained the situation in a simple manner. He had chanced upon the whereabouts of a wanted criminal, so he filed a report and received a reward. The money was then used to buy a house for his sister. Ha Dot Ran's face reddened as she heard the story, and grabbed Tae Dot Hyuk's cheek as she pulled him out from the room. N. Dot Nuna, isn't this good? That's not it. A wanted criminal. What were you doing? It is dangerous. Ha. Huh. Are you hurt anywhere? At that moment, Tae Dot Hyuk's heart warmed on the inside. She was more concerned for his well dot being than this spacious house. Oh dot of course. Who am I, Nuna's little brother? Kong Dot Suk, who had been listening from the room, interrupted their conversation. Ha ha. Nunim, don't be so anxious. This is Tae Dot Hyuk, who is a very sly guy. Even if he were to be thrown into Harlem, New York, he would still probably come out alive. Yes. Ha Dot Ran grabbed Tae Dot Hyuk's ear this time and whispered. Then is he the detective responsible for catching the criminal? Yes. He seems to have really become my Hyung this past week. I see. They gathered again and started the birthday party. After singing happy birthday, they ate the food and talked. By the way, Nunim. You are much more beautiful than from what I heard in his stories. EY, don't flatter me too much on my birthday. Seriously. Kong Dot Suk Young. You fall for women way too easily. Tae Dot Hyuk's head started hurting. Tae Dot Min, who was drinking juice on the side, suddenly approached Kong Dot Suk. Detective Cho Kong Dot Suk. I've seen the interview, and your speech on justice was great. Can I ask for your autograph? Tae Dot Min also fell for him. A love triangle. Kong Dot Suk chucked and signed while telling Tae Dot Min to think of him as a hyung. That reminds me, Tae Dot Min. He wanted to be a lawyer. This time, Tae Dot Hyuk wanted to see that dream come true. It was at that moment that Ha Dot Ran suddenly started to cry. Wah! The confused Tae Dot Hyuk asked. N. Nuna, why are you crying all of a sudden? Do you not like the food? No, that's not it. I'm just so happy. My family living together in this nice home. The whole thing feels like a dream. It isn't a dream. So, the three of us will continue to live happily every after. Why dot yes, te dot hyuk, why is it just the three of you? What about me? Kong dot suk interrupted. Te dot hyuk waved his hand like he was shooing a bothersome fly. Hyung isn't part of the family. Chet. Ha dot ran soon started to laugh again. It was because Kong dot suk started doing a strange dance. It was surprisingly easy for Kong Dot Suk to blend in with the family, as Tae Dot Hyuk viewed Kong Dot Suk as a trustworthy person. A person like this is rare. 
In the past five days, he had helped Tay Dot Hyuk in finding a home and buying furniture. He even used his arms to help move it. If it were Kong Dot Suk, then Tay Dot Hyuk could entrust his family to him. After thinking that, Tay Dot Hyuk quietly left his seat and headed to his room. The new house was so spacious that the three family members could each have a separate room. I used 100 million to acquire this house, while the furniture costed 15 million won. The remaining balance is around 20 million. It would be the military funds for his work in the future. Tay Dot Hyuk sat at a desk and took out a notebook. There were already many things written down. However, it still wasn't enough. There was a limit to the human memory even more so if it was a dream. Therefore, he had to write down as many details about the dream before he forgot them. Tay Dot Hyuk saw what would happen in the next 15 years in a dream. Even if the ending was a tragedy, it was clear that this information would be very useful. I should have memorized a lottery number. Most of the information that Tay Dot Hyuk knew about the future was regarding criminals. They were huge criminals that caused a sensation around the country. There were approximately 120 people. Tay Dot Hyuk opened the notebook and started writing down his own blacklist. He wrote down things like What had already happened, and what crimes were going to happen. I also can't forget about the crime skills. It didn't matter if he couldn't handle them properly yet. He should be able to make good use of them. Tay Dot Hyuk now had two weapons. His blacklist and the crime skills. Who will be accused of murder? He would protect the small happiness he now possessed with his own two hands. Tay Dot Hyuk made this vow. It was at that moment that the mirror suddenly vibrated. Due to a new contact, one affinity point has been acquired. What? Did I get a point just now? Why did he get it all of a sudden? Tay Dot Hyuk didn't even do anything. Moreover, it wasn't the end. The first upgrade condition, blacklist creation, has been completed. Once all the upgrades conditions are complete, you will be able to upgrade to noble. If you become a noble, then you can gain a wider variety of crime skills. Tay Dot Hyuk muttered quietly after reading all the messages. Starting from a commoner and rising to a noble. Am I going to develop into the god of crime? His head started to hurt. Chapter 8 The Second Skill You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 8 The Second Skill. Chapter 8 The Second Skill It had been a week since they moved into the new house. They still walked without thinking toward their old house, but the frequency of that would soon decrease. In the meantime, two things had changed. First of all, Ha Dot Rant's resting time had increased. This was because she had changed from the second shift to the third shift. It was a bold decision since they didn't need to pay a monthly rent anymore. Of course, Ha Dot Ran had refused. The salary difference was significant. She had argued that she could send Tay Dot Min to a private cram school with that money. However, even Tay Dot Min had opposed her, so she was forced to surrender. What could be done when Tay Dot Min said that his brain was too good to go to a cram school? Of course, he had to suffer a headlock from Tay Dot Hyuk who was standing next to him. Ha Dot Ran was now able to have some personal time. Whether it was because of the time to relax or the move, Ha Dot Ran's cough had disappeared completely. Tay Dot Hyuk smiled warmly at that. Then the second change. He now had a family to greet him when he came home. Tay Dot Hyuk moved quickly. Nuna would be waiting for him to eat dinner. By the way, I never thought that Kong Dot Suk Hyung would donate all the reward money. Originally, a detective wasn't supposed to receive the bounty money. It was likely to be construed as a bribe. Out of the 200 million won that Tay Dot Hyuk had received, he had given 100 million to Kong Dot Suk. Yet Kong Dot Suk had donated all the reward money from the Sungjin group to an orphanage. Tay Dot Hyuk had asked why he didn't use it for his marriage funds and Kong Dot Suk had simply laughed. Kong Dot Suk had watched the children playing on the playground and said, They are the only ones who would want to marry me, 
so it seems like I will have to wait 10 years. Wah! A detective is trying to commit a crime. This was because Kong.Suk was really popular with the children. Kong.Suk had laughed and said this was enough. There were only idiots around Tae.Hyuk. Come to think of it. I haven't received any crime skills in the past week. There was still a long time until the next incident on the blacklist. He thought about using that time to pull back the veil of the demon mirror. Ah, right. I decided to call it the demon revealing mirror. It was the magic mirror that illuminated the true image of a demon. He had recently discovered that the success rate of robbery was around 10%. However, it was good at stealing strange things, such as a wig, handcuffs, panties. Forget it. He still didn't know how to get skills and affinity points, nor did he know the identity of the demon revealing mirror. Damn, that pseudo bastard. He had taken it to a shaman who was famous in dealing with demon possessed items. This was what the shaman had said, it is made of bronze, a mix between copper and tin. The reflection rate is around 80%. This probably wasn't made to be used as a mirror. It looks ceremonial. The value. The conclusion was that it was just an ordinary mirror. Tae.Hyuk glared at the demon revealing mirror. Strange letters could still be seen on it. Tae.Hyuk, dot title. God of crime dot rating. Commoner, lacking conditions for upgrade, dot skills possessed. Robbery, LV1, A. Eh. There were letters that he could see. Additionally, there was something blurred under the skills section. Perhaps. A clue to a new skill. Tae.Hyuk pressed on the question marks. However, there was no reaction. The direction. Tae.Hyuk hurried forward. He decided to look through everything about the demon revealing mirror when he got back. Ah, uh, isn't that Nuna? Tae.Hyuk stopped walking. Ha.Ran was standing on the street outside their house with a face that seemed like she was about to cry. She looked anxious like something big had happened. T. Tae.Hyuk what do I do? What, is there a thief or something? If he had known, he would have come home earlier. Fortunately, Ha.Ran seemed unharmed despite her face being a mess of tears. What's going on? I.I.T. is a big deal. He's hurt. An accident. He was taken. Wait a minute. Take a deep breath and tell me slowly. Say it again. What happened and to who? Ha.Ran breathed slowly as she followed Tae.Hyuk's words and finally started to calm down. Tae.Hyuk stroked the back of the still crying Ha.Ran. Now that she was a little more normal, he was able to hear a clear answer, that I just got a call. Tae.Hyuk was injured. He stole a luxury car and an accident happened. Unless he receives surgery, his life is at risk. Plus, the car is completely smashed, so he will go to jail if. That Tae.Hyuk bastard. Isn't he a completely crazy bastard? Wait a minute, that's me. Nuna, wait. Who am I? T.T.Hyuk, then think about the story you just told me. What should I do, T.Hyuk? T.Hyuk is injured. Look, I'm safe and sound. Dot. Ha.Ran still seemed confused. T.Hyuk realized that Ha.Ran had been subjected to a crime. Voice phishing. It was a type of phone fraud. Ten years ago in Japan, they had called it the, it's me fraud. A call would come from someone saying, it's me, and that they had been seriously hurt, please deposit some money quickly. This way, they could pretend to be a close person without saying the name. As this approach became more famous and no one fell for it anymore, they started pretending about different things. Something like your bank book password had been leaked and they needed to deposit the money into another account. In this way, they had deceived the other person. Ha.Ran had fallen for a trick that was commonly used 10 years ago. Nuna, I'm okay. Do you think that I would steal a car? 
Tae.hyuk hugged Ha.ran gently and stroked her back. She stopped crying as the excitement subsided. I am fine. I won't get into any car accidents and. He wouldn't be framed for murder either. Tae.hyuk explained to Ha.ran slowly. Then it is a scam. Not yet. The other person is just spreading out the trap. But it is good that you are safe and sound. Tae.hyuk grinned at his sister. The reason the It's Me fraud was effective was because it played on the person's affection. He was thankful for that fact. Still, why is a scam that was popular a few years ago being used now? Ha.ran was someone who had graduated from a girl's dormitory in middle school and high school. As soon as she graduated, she had started work straight away to look after her little brothers. She was just like a flower that grew in a greenhouse and didn't know anything about the world. So, she was silly enough to believe in others. In other words, she was a sitting duck. At any rate, can it end like this? Those guys had made Ha.ran cry. His anger wouldn't be resolved unless he did something. That person said they would call again. Yes, he told me to prepare my bank book and seal and wait for him. Tae.hyuk smiled widely. The scam was still in progress. Nuna, give me your handphone and go to your room. There are many interesting dramas these days that you should watch. If anything like this happens again, just call me. Yes. I understand. If he waited, a call would come from the opponent. Tae.hyuk entered his house while thinking about what he could do to them. Asterisk 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 first of all, he would pretend to be deceived, only to turn the tables on them. However, Tae.hyuk became distressed about how to do that. They will notice if the person who answers the call has changed. The best way was to have Ha.ran pick up and direct her on what to say. However, she had a pure nature and didn't want to talk to the scammers anymore. Is there another way? Dururu. He was thinking of a way to catch them when he got a call. Those guys. BR. However, the vibration wasn't only heard from his handphone. It was the demon revealing mirror. Crime skill. Voice modulation has been learnt. You can imitate the voice of the target directly, the criteria to learn the skill completely hasn't been met yet that IT has been registered in the temporary skills window. New crime skill. Tae.hyuk's eyes flashed. Chapter 9. The second skill number 2 you are listening at novel full.audio. Chapter 9 The second skill number 2. Chapter 9. The second skill number 2 compared to the first skill he had gotten, there was something different about this. He had learned robbery, and now it was voice modulation. It has been registered in the temporary skills window. This means it has not yet been learned completely. He guessed the reason for the difference. In the case of robbery, he had succeeded in using it on the pickpocket as soon as he had gotten the skill. Tae.hyuk realized the conditions needed to acquire the skills. I need to use the skill on someone else. He kept it in mind. He would deal a big blow to the voice fishers. It would be easier with the voice modulation skill. Tae.hyuk used the demon revealing mirror to activate voice modulation. He changed his voice to Ha.Rance. Voice modulation has been used. You can imitate the voice of CO Ha.Rance directly. Ah. Mic test. Mic test. CO Tae.hyuk, you are handsome, hum, hum. Tae.hyuk cleared his throat and remained silent. It was the first time he was using the skill, so it was blended with his original voice. I should practice. The voice fishers had disconnected the call, but they would call back soon. In the meantime, he had to master voice modulation perfectly. Tae.hyuk looked in the demon revealing mirror and thought of Ha.Rant's voice. Then he used the skill. Tae.hyuk, the weather today is quite good. Ugh. This sounds like the voice of a transgender. It was half a man's voice and half a woman's. Tae.hyuk tried several variations. Tae.hyuk, happy birthday. 
Tay.hyuk, today's side dishes are your favorite sausages and stirred. Fried vegetables. Tay.hyuk, no matter what he tried, he was missing 2%. Tay.hyuk, it is morning. Wake up. Tay.hyuk, I love. The voice of a young woman flowed from his mouth. That's it. Tay.hyuk's voice was converted to ha. Rants perfectly. Anyway, will the temporary skill disappear if I learn a different skill? I need to learn it completely if I want to make it permanent. He started to understand some of the mechanisms. Dururu. The phone started ringing again. Tay.hyuk pressed the call button this time. H. Hello, it was a trembling voice that seemed like it would burst out crying at any moment, and it was exactly like Ha.Rant's voice. On the other side of the phone, a man's thick voice could be heard, there is no need to panic. Your little brother will be okay if you do what I tell you. I did I ask that so. Of course. Have you found what I asked you to? Tay.Hyuk decided to draw out the time. I'm sorry. I don't remember what it was. Can you please tell me one more time? The bank book and seal. Andy bring your ID card just in case. Once your little brother. Tay.Hyuk. Yes, approximately 15 million won is required for Tay.Hyuk surgery fees as well as the repair of the car. Do you have that much in your bank book? Yes, there is enough. The man's breathing on the other side of the phone became rough. That guy. Do you think you've got a sucker? Then I'll look again. Eddie ETS I'll call you back after a while. I'll say it once more, T.Hyuk's life lies in your hands. Do. The call was disconnected. Kia. Whose life is in whose hands? What a famous line. A famous line. T.Hyuk clicked his tongue. The easiest way to catch them was to get assistance from Kong.Suk. However, as with most voice phishing scams, the other person would be in a foreign country, perhaps, China or the Philippines. Even if he carried out an investigation, would he be able to catch their tails? He wanted to inflict damage directly onto them. Wait. How about that method? Tay.Hyuk had been in prison for 10 years. During that time, he met countless criminals. Among those, there had been scammers. I didn't think I would use what Iliarnt from the Elder like this. The Elder was the nickname of a legendary scam artist who had stolen hundreds of billions of won in scams. Even so, he had only received seven years in prison. Compare this to his roommate who had received three years for stealing Ramyun and 40,000 won. The Elder told him about the prey that was easiest to deceive. It was those trying to scam other people. A scam artist who tricked other scam artists. That was the elder. By the way, Nuna is really genuine. The other person was so excited about catching a big fish. In fact, all Tay.Hyuk had done was put a spoon in the rice that had been served. Ha.Ran had completely fallen for the voice fishing scam. From the scammer's point of view, it was like fishing at a fish farm. Thus, the people hadn't even noticed that the person talking had changed. Egu. Nuna is just like a child. Ha.Ran was innocent to the point of stupidity. Maybe that was why she experienced such a tragedy in the future that Tay.Hyuk had seen. He walked slowly through the house. They said it was the bank book and seal. If I'm going to pretend to be duped, it should be perfect. He searched through the drawer where his sister hid her valuables. Hugh. I will teach Nunim how to doubt someone. Tay.Hyuk really liked Ha.Ran the way she was now. However, he couldn't help feeling uneasy. Found it. Uh, what is this? It was a jewelry box that girls like to play with. This is obviously her treasure box. He had no idea her words were so literal. Let's open it. Inside were some photos and a doll that Ha.Ran liked. There were valuables like the bank book along with miscellaneous goods. Family photo. It had been taken before the accident that their parents had died in. 
the five family members were gathered together, smiling brightly. Tae.hyuk felt choked up and couldn't look at it anymore. In the end, he turned over the photo and saw a writing on the back. Now, I am mother and father. Ha.rant's fine writing. Nuna. What type of heart did she have when writing this? Tae.hyuk shared ache just thinking about it. Wake up, CO Tae.hyuk. Don't you have to finish what you're doing? He would soak in the emotions after the work was over. Uh, there is another piece of paper. He tried to put the family photo back where it was and discovered another piece of paper. Tae.hyuk confirmed what it was. Then something hot exploded in his heart. It was a university acceptance letter. The letter had the name of the university that Ha.ran wanted to go to. I'm so stupid that I couldn't get into university, so now I have to get a job. Ha.ran had laughed while saying that. It had been far from the case. That lie. Really stupid. Tae.hyuk wiped away something hot that was flowing down his cheeks and made a vow. He was alive due to someone's sacrifice. It was now his turn to return the favor. Yes, I will go to university with Nuna. Tae.hyuk tightened his grip on the demon revealing mirror and engraved the new determination in his heart. He waited for a while, then he received a call from those guys. Chapter 10 The Second Skill Number 3 You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 10 The Second Skill Number 3 Chapter 10 The Second Skill Number 3 The banks are closed at such a late time, so go to the nearest ATM machine. Those were the instructions Tae.hyuk received. They deliberately aimed for the evening. There was a higher probability of someone being alone at around the time when the banks were closed, making for a perfect situation for voice phishing. Tae.hyuk arrived at the ATM and waited for the call. Not long afterwards, the person contacted him, Have you arrived at the ATM? Oops. I almost forgot to turn on voice modulation. Tae.hyuk used the demon revealing mirror to activate voice modulation. Voice modulation has been used. You can directly imitate the voice of CO Ha.ran. Yes. I arrived. I thought I just heard a man's voice. Tae.hyuk made a mistake, and the skill had been released. He manipulated the demon revealing mirror at lightning speed to reactivate voice modulation, and then gave a trembling reply. I'm not quite sure what you're saying. I'm currently alone so why would a man's voice? Did some type of confusion happen? Indeed. Then, please proceed to deposit the surgery and repair fee into the account that I previously mentioned. Dot 15 million won in total. It is obvious that he wants to shout with joy right now. Yes, I understand. Please wait for a moment. Tae.hyuk went to the ATM and deliberately wasted time in order to make the opponent nervous, rendering him unable to make any calm decisions. After five minutes, the voice phishing scammer spoke. Are you done yet? Tae.hyuk made a fuss, as if he was confused. I.it is strange. I have the money in the account, but I can't make a deposit. W. What is this? Slow down and try again. Is the machine broken? I'll try another bank account. Tae.hyuk put his bank book on the ATM and sent the money. Of course, it wasn't 15 million won. The reaction was immediate that I've confirmed that 10,000 won has been deposited. Really? That's strange. The money was taken out of my living expenses account so why can't I withdraw from my savings account? The money is in your savings account. Then IT is natural that you can't withdraw the money. A savings account can't be withdrawn from unless it is expired or cancelled. Eh, T. Then what should I do? That you'll have to go to the bank and cancel it. The bank isn't open right now. Isn't this enough to make it seem like I'm willing to pay? This way, it will be hard for them to give up on my case. Tae.hyuk exclaimed like he was just reminded of something. Ah. There is a way to withdraw money without having to go to the bank and cancelling it. 
There is a way. Yes. My savings account is a little unusual, as it is a limited savings account. It is a type of savings account where you sign up to collect a certain amount of money before withdrawing it. I signed up to pay for my brother's university tuition. As long as I have a certain amount of money in my bank book, I won't have to go to the bank to cancel it. There is such a thing. Yes. However, the interest rates are low so it isn't popular. Indeed. He believes me. Believes me. Of course, this is a lie. At any rate, the limit is 20 million won, so I need 3 million won before I can withdraw all the money. But getting 3 million won all of a sudden. Cough. He is conflicted. Conflicted. The voice phishing scammer didn't realize that he himself was being scammed. Tay.hyuk said the decisive words. I will borrow it from a friend. However, I don't know if I can borrow 3 million won so suddenly. P. Please wait a moment. The voice phishing scammer was confused. If Tay.hyuk contacted a friend, then he would have to explain the situation to them, making it obvious to the friend that it was a scam. The scammer would then miss a valuable fish. Ha! Huh. Let's do this instead. I will lend you 3 million won. Let me clarify. You're saying that I if you put 3 million won into the limited savings account, then you can withdraw it right away. It seems so. Cough. Then please withdraw the money and send me 18 million won. How about that, T. Thank you. You are my brother's lifesaver. Then the account number is. Tay.hyuk receiving the scammer's account number was like finding an oasis in the vast desert, please wait. Oh, don't hang up the phone. He wanted to stop Tay.hyuk from calling anywhere else and asking around. Yes, I understand. I'm sorry but I have one more call to make. The phone connected to the scammer was Ha.Rance, and Tay.hyuk still had his own phone. Tae.hyuk silenced the phone to stop the scammer from hearing his conversation and called Kong.suk. Kong.suk Young. Ah, uh, is this Ha.ran SSI? Dot. Whoops. I forgot to turn off the skill. It is late so what is going on? Ah. Uh. Hyung, sorry. It is Tae.hyuk. Ah. Uh. Is that so? It is late. Go to sleep early. Tae.hyuk laughed at the clear disappointment in Kong.suk's voice and proceeded to describe the situation to him. Hmm. Let me know once you receive all the information. They called Ha.ran SSI's handphone. I will check the time that it was received UT it will probably lead to a foreign country. It is harder to arrest that way. Even if I have the chief bank account information. Hey. How did you get something like that? Normal bank accounts were points where the money was passed through, while a chief account was the central point where the money was actually gathered and originated from. The voice fisher had to use the chief account to deposit money into Tay.hyuk's account. I will turn over as much information as possible and catch all the people that are in South Korea. Yes. This brat I was just laying down watching TV, and now I have to work because of you. The special diligence will help when you get married. Tae.hyuk ended the call with Kong.suk and used voice modulation again. He then said to the phishing scammer. How is it? I have deposited the 3 million please check it as quickly as possible. Yes, I understand. Tae.hyuk went to the ATM and checked the bank book. There was a deposit for 3 million won. Their account information was stamped as well, meaning the bank log would have their IP address. Tae.hyuk ended the conversation with the voice phishing scammer and sent the information to Kong.suk. He had earned himself 3 million won, while Kong.suk would be able to catch those voice phishing scammers in South Korea. I ate well. And. Crime skill. Voice modulation has been acquired. You can directly imitate the voice of the target that IT is completely learnt. Nice. He fully gained voice modulation, 
meaning that he could now use it without worrying about it ever disappearing. I can directly imitate the voice of someone else. Isn't this a good skill? He already came up with several useful ideas to use it. Tae.hyuk showed a warm smile. Asterisk asterisk asterisk, I've finished, Nuna. Oh. Tae.hyuk came. Ha. Huh. I thought you were watching a drama. No, I prepared some rice for us to eat together when you got back. Oh, really? I am hungry after working so hard. Did you study that hard? Wah, wow, looks delicious. Tae.hyuk, don't change the subject. Answer my question. I will eat it well. Oh right, Nuna. Ha. Huh. Thank you.